Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Wine Wednesday. Um, I'm here with Ray and Holly. Cheryl could not come tonight. She had uh, personal stuff going on. We won't talk about it, but I am sipping on some, some Chardonnay. I hope you are sipping on some Chardonnay or your preferred wine or your preferred grape juice. Nobody cares. We're here to talk seahorses and life in general on Wine Wednesday. Couple of things at the top here. Number one, might look funny behind me. I might sound funny. Let me know if I'm too loud or too soft. Literally, one of the reasons we're late is because my computer, I just got to get a new one because the one I usually use keeps going plip. And then I have to use the Mac. That's we're not on Instagram today because I don't have the program that goes to Instagram on this computer. Oh, well, everybody knows to come to YouTube or Facebook. But anyhow, so that's why I might look or sound funny. Let me know if it sounds too funny. And uh, I'm sipping on Chardonnay. Let me know what you guys are sipping on. Other update, just to let you know, we'll talk about it more later. But um, the request last week, I think, because the week before I was sick, this week I actually figured out that the reason that I'm missing so many messages and so many other things is because I updated my phone and somehow all my notifications got turned off. So if you have messaged me and I haven't responded, I truly apologize. This isn't just the excuse like, oh, I've been so busy. I literally wasn't getting the notifications. And if I, you know, if I'm busy with life and I don't get on social media, I just don't see it. So I really apologize if I've missed any, any of your messages. You'll hear from me now, possibly a month later. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, but anyways, uh, that's that. And then also last week, I believe it was um, requested by Kevin, who actually gifted the two Aquachar chambers to me, I had already put one Aquachar chamber in the 40-gallon all-in-one to see how it would um, affect, because everyone says, well, you don't really see any effect. I can tell you, I cannot believe how clear that tank is. It's amazing. Like, I'm having to force myself. This is the tank, by the way, that I had trouble with cloudy water. I had trouble with having to do bigger water changes because algae started growing. I had trouble with everything in that tank. And all of a sudden it's so clear. It's only been running, what, maybe two weeks, maybe more, but it, the, the tank's clear. I can't attribute it to anything other than the aqua char chamber, the char chamber, excuse me, because I didn't change anything else. In fact, I'm having to force myself, and Ray's going to jump me here in a second, but I'm having to force myself to do water changes because I'm like, oh, it looks so nice in there. There's nothing wrong. Now, my seahorse knowledge and my friends have educated me to know you can't skip a water change, even if the tank looks beautiful, because if you do, it's not going to look so beautiful anymore. But I'm just saying I can see this huge difference with the char chamber. I have to smack my own hand and say, go do the water change, even though it looks perfect. I've literally almost forgotten one week. Last week, I was like, oh, it's been such a bad week. I didn't feel good. It looks so good in there. I did force myself. But the point being, the char chamber is making a huge difference. I also, I told you guys last week, but I wanted to really kind of give it some time. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I, I started making a video when I started clearing the char chamber. You don't have to, but just, you know, so I didn't get any black into the water. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about in a minute. But I cleared the char chamber. I videotaped that just showing how I did it. Uh, I videotaped putting it in the system. I videotaped the tank then. And then I videotaped the tank, you know, in increments as we went along. And I mean, I... You'll have to tell me when you see the video, which I plan to post this week, but I really feel like you can see a huge difference. And I did not do a water change between the first increments. I tell you when I did a water change and it just gets better and better. So I haven't tested pH. I may do that to complete the video because that's one of the benefits, supposedly, you know, that Aquachar eventually stabilizes pH. It's not an immediate thing. It's not a fix for sure, but it affects it. Sorry, guys, I'm rambling. Last thing is, Last week, Kevin, who gifted the charge, the two char chambers, requested that the smaller char chamber right here um, would be used in a pod system because Tyann of, oh my gosh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be terrible now. I can't remember the name of Tyann's, uh, when she comes, I'll, I'll say it again, but Tyann, what is it, Holly? Ty tank Talk with Tyann? Is that her stream? Yeah, Tank Talk. Tank Talk with Tyann on Facebook and the group. If you need a link, let me know. But anyways, she uses these in char chambers. And there's so many different um, people that have come forward, including seahorse people. 
that said they're using these and it's making a big difference. And I can tell you it's making a big difference in the 40 gallon. I'm going to use this in a pod system because that's what Kevin requested. And we're going to do a little experimenting on, I mean, I'm, I, okay, sorry, I'm rambling. Last thing I know Holly and Ray want to talk. I'm rambling, but I ordered a bunch of pods. I've set up two buckets. Nothing's in them yet. Cause I haven't gotten the pods yet, but when I get the pods, I'm going to do one system with the char chamber and one system without. And then we'll see what kind of differences we see. We'll do some testing. Hey, Aquachar, we're talking about you. In the system, last thing, guys, if you haven't heard me in past weeks, this is the new Char Chamber by Robert King. The product inside, the gray, that's not charcoal. That's Aquachar. If you don't know what Aquachar is, where you been? And go check out, just go on my channel and search for Aquachar. You can hear the multiple different um, episodes we've talked about it. But it's not only it does work in a sense like charcoal, but it's not charcoal. And you can read about it or hear about all the benefits in the other episodes, but it also eventually acts as a bio media. So like your ceramics or like your K1 or whatever. So there's all these benefits to Aquachar. I've been using Aquachar myself for what, um, Brian, like a year now, I, something like that. And I've already seen the benefits but Robert King is the one that came up with this contraption that you literally uses air to keep the jet detritus and stuff off the aquachar. And so this is a product from Robert King. And every time I talk about this, I try to link Robert King's page and aquachar's page so you can learn more. And so I just wanted to update you guys. I'm just waiting on the pods and then we'll talk. We'll not only talk more about this on Wine Wednesday, but I'm going to show you guys in videos. And I do have the first video done. I just want to kind of do some pH testing so it's complete. So that's what's taking so long. Sorry. But yeah, char chambers. I'll let you know where to get them. If you want to learn more, Aquachar's page, Robert King's page. And of course, go to Ty or Tank Talk with Tyann on Facebook. Um, but I'm really happy with the one in the 40 gallons so far. And we'll let you know and we'll go through what happens with the pods in this one. Okay. I mean, there are people that literally, you know, I'm not advising this because I would never advise this, but there are people who have stated that the char chamber literally was able, able to overcome part of the cycling of a tank. Like you didn't have to go through all the steps because it helped so much, but we'll get into that more when we have Brian and uh, Robert back someday. I just wanted to update you guys on what's going on with them because Kevin was so nice to get them to me. I am putting them to use. I just got to, um, show you guys the results, but it's coming. Okay. Enough of that. Hey to everybody here. Hey, Seahorse Corner. I already said, Hey to Aquachar. Um, what else is going on guys? It's open chat. Uh, we just literally had a huge thunderstorm here. I didn't know if we were going to be able to do one Wednesday because my power kept cutting out. If we do disappear, I apologize. My power's cut out again. It stopped for now, but we'll see. How's the weather been around you guys? We'll get to seahorses in a second, but I want to say hi to Holly and Ray. How's the weather been, Ray? Well, we had uh, a few days ago, we had uh, a 600 kilometer wide storm. And I forget what they call it now. I just remember that it starts with a D. And uh, uh, tornado winds with it, but without the tornadoes, although a couple tornadoes did show up. Ooh. But it uh, went on for about a thousand kilometers through uh, Ontario and Quebec. And uh, it's done just unbelievable damage. Oh, no. Uh, and the difference in this type of storm, it's a linear force wind. Instead of being circular like a tornado, mm -hmm. it's direct all in one direction. Oof. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a tornado, it covers, it'll cut a swath pathway through, and it's down maybe... Uh, a couple minutes or maybe in some instances you might get one that it's on the ground for uh, 20 minutes or so this was on the ground for a day oh my gosh and like 600 miles swath a thousand kilometers wide oh. or long wow Jeez. but i think i think you got part of it down in the states there but i can't remember what areas actually got it, mm -hmm. it uh, did more damage here than down there Right. Well, I, you know, I wish Cheryl was actually able to come tonight because she could have uh, compared it to how we adjust flow in a tank. <laughs> but and that's not even funny because I know how bad that is. But, you know, Holly, how the about other you? The thing I was thinking, Noah, is 
I don't have to worry about the, these uh, screwing up these uh, what do you call them notices notifications. I don't even have a smartphone, so I can't see you wasting the money on it. Well, Ray, oh no, it, it's not. It's um. Oh, you mean for the weather? The storm, yeah, notifications, oh, yeah. severe weather and you, stuff. You can get messages from people. Yeah. Oh, you I mean for people? Are you talking about me saying my notifications were off? Yeah, you said you uh, yeah. up, up did your phone or something. I don't have to worry about that. Right. Uh, well, you don't have I've to. I've got a house phone. You don't have to pay <laughs> for it, and you actually can. Like, I have my notifications for Facebook and for certain people on Messenger to make sure that I see them, or I did have that set up. Yeah. I didn't yeah, miss I'm anything. Sad. But when I updated my phone, I, could, I couldn't figure out. People kept saying, I messaged you, and I'm like, what? I didn't and get it. Figured out. <laughs> It was it was not on. So apologies. You don't have a phone, you don't have to worry about it. I'm going through my well, Ray. <laughs> I care what people think. And <laughs> I care about my friends. <laughs> no, I, I'm but the other One thing other is, thing, though, I wanted to ask. Uh, I don't know whether I'm hearing right, but you were talking about with the aquachar there, something about pods. Yeah. I'm gonna use it in a pod system. What's a pod? Copapods, sorry. Copapods or oh, amphipods or whatever. Yeah. yeah. See, I didn't. I didn't have them because, I mean, I, I guess I maybe sh my my bigger seahorses have never gone after copepods, but Cheryl's doing some work with copepods and amphipods. I ordered amphipods too. Amphipods. But, that's that's yeah. what they will eat. Yeah. But well, I may, maybe worry. I'll do. It. Sorry. Go ahead. I've never worried about uh, water quality with pods. Like I've cultured a lot of different ones, and I. Why would you have to use aquachar for it though? Well, you haven't watched talk, talk tank talk with tying in, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I mean, like, think about it, Ray, though, because we, we go hard on making sure that when you have an Artemia or a brine shrimp hatchery, it's like, we still got to get Dan in here for, um, seahorse or uh, talk with seahorse source three, where he talks about that kind of stuff, but you, it's so important to keep the hatchery clean and I understand pods are different and amphipods are different. I really do get all that. But people have, you know, said that it just makes a huge difference. You got to go to Tyann's page to really I'll see. Tell you, after decades of uh, uh, growing brine shrimp to the point like I'm, I was supplying two stores with the adult brine shrimp. Uh, so the brine, uh, the, the brine shrimp especially, but... Uh, with uh, probably about a decade doing uh, various copepods and amphipods uh, and never ever worrying about uh, water quality. With Artemia? Even with Artemia. Wait, were you feeding him to fry? Yeah. Well, he'd clean them then, I bet. But before just I sterilized them before yeah. they were. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I rolled them in 26-gallon uh, Rubbermaid containers. Okay, I had four of these 26 gallon containers uh, sitting on uh, uh, cement blocks with boards that tilted the containers forward so that there was a low point at the bottom instead of just like, if you set a garbage pail on the floor, you don't have a low point. And uh, anyway, well, I think I, I, would, think take that the, I would take the, uh, the brine shrimp out of the uh, growing container uh, then I would put them in the enrichment container where right. now they would be in clean water and they would be on clean food. And when they get through that stage, then uh, I use the peroxide on them and then I feed them to the seahorses. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had no problems that way. As long as well, I. That, that, that's wonderful. I do think that when Dan and or Cheryl come back for Ask Seahorse Source Part 3, they're going to talk a little bit differently than you because all I know is, and I mean, you, your system worked. That's wonderful. I'm not, your system worked. But in my case, one of the things when I was first tr trying to breed seahorse fry is I kept losing them. I couldn't figure out why. And Dan and Cheryl helped me figure out it was because I was using the same hatchery, not cleaning it well enough, and just having all sorts of problems, and it, it it came down to the hatchery. So what you were doing obviously worked. And okay, and of course, you're, you're talking, you're talking about a hatchery, though. He's talking, about, talking about their about... containers they're living in. 
Uh, you're right. talking about feeding the uh, uh, newly hatched after they uh, get to the second instar stage where they'll feed, then enriching them and feeding them. I really uh, do get it. I get it. And peroxide is that. the tool that Dan will talk about. I agree. I agree. I agree. Go ahead, Ray. But when you're dealing with uh, growing the adults, with the amount of food you have to have in the tank, there's no way you're not going to have bacteria in there. And Which is why the char chamber might be amazing and might help. Should, the char chamber would get so fouled in an adult in, when you're trying to raise adults that it's not even funny. If you're doing well, in any kind of density, I, I would imagine if you're doing in a very weak density, but a weak density isn't sufficient to uh, when you're uh, uh, using a lot of uh, the brine shrimp. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I will say is number one, Tyann disagrees and she talks about it all the time. And she, and I'm going to try to not duplicate what she's done, but do two buckets or two containers and do a comparison. I'm not saying what the results will be. I don't know. Um, and maybe we can get Aquachar and um, Robert back in here to talk more about it. I'm just doing the experiment. I know you're, you've got so much experience, Ray. I'm not trying to disagree with you. I understand what you're saying, especially with Artemia, you know, about, enriching and then using peroxide, which is what Dan will go into detail with and show us pictures of. Um, but I'm just saying I'm doing this experiment. This was gifted to me. I really do love Aquachar, period. It's making a huge difference in my 40 gallon. So I just thought I'd use the other one to test with feeds. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I don't know what'll happen. So it'll be interesting anyway. Just yeah I found for my own use that uh for the uh uh copepods that it was best to grow them in trays yeah. rather than like in a, a deeper tank uh, structure. Uh, trays? What do you mean trays? I'm not sure. I think it might have something to do with the open water. And I don't honestly remember what, why I was told to do it that way. I was um, talking with Randy Holmes Farley mm -hmm. uh, when he was back on Reef Central before he went over to R2R. Um, and I believe it was him that recommended it at the time. Or Wait, somebody, somebody suggested to him and he passed it on to me. Sure. And I tried it and it was much better. I had much higher yields. And I don't remember all the stuff about it. Like this is a long time ago. Sure. No, no, no. I'm not going to quiz you. I just wanted to know what do you mean by trays? Like, like. Uh, okay. Restaurant dishwasher tubs, kind yeah, of thing. Fifteen liter uh, sterilite uh, plastic containers. Okay. And I guess people might put, uh, I don't know, if you got a bunch of different combs and brushes or something, you might put in them and stick the lid on it and put them in a drawer. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, it's it's just uh, little small storage containers, really, but hmm. they're only uh, oh maybe three and a half, four inches deep. Like the uh, ones you stick under your bed. Gotcha. Well, those are, I think those ones you, you stick on your bed, at least the one I have upstairs, that's uh -huh. a lot larger. Mm -hmm. But these were, these ones were liter. uh, 15 liters. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to, my mind won't translate into uh, gallons right now. No worries. These seven, eight liters to a gallon. Mm -hmm. uh, so but roughly about four gallons. Mm -hmm. um, oh. But something about the uh, shape. Yeah, with the, all the uh, with the open surface area and uh, not as much depth to it, and mm -hmm. uh, I know I can't tell you actual yield difference, but it was enough to be noticeable. Was that with copepods and amphipods, or just copepods? The amphipods. Uh, uh, I never did the amphipods in uh, the that shell of a tray. I was doing them in uh, aquariums with rock rubble and uh, not filling the tanks up. So I, I think I was probably dealing with about uh, three or four inches of water over the uh, the mass of rock rubble. But uh, the rock rubble was, first of all, um, quite small so that there was lots of small cavities in that that the, the, the amphipod and the plea could... Uh, hide because uh, the amphipods are uh, predaceous and uh, so then when I wanted to harvest uh, 
I would just take uh, some rocks out that were crawling with it, dump them into the uh, uh, net, rinse uh, the small ones off. They'd go through the net into uh, back into a container. And then the, the larger ones were in with the rock and I just picked the rocks out and swish in the water and mm -hmm. and that no, was I, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you, Ray, to find a picture of one of your trays. Maybe you've shown me before, but I want to see it. Hey Daniel, hey Shyla. My amphipods hey. are in a pretty um I was gonna ask you how the rubble rock's going. Mine are pretty shallow too. I don't I don't know. I'm using a sterilite container too. I don't think the water's three inches. It's probably more like five, maybe five or six, but that's what I have them in. And then there's the layer of the rubber, the rubble rock you gave me. So the water's only maybe this high over the rubble rock because hmm. it's, it's so deep. The container is shallow. So maybe something similar to that. Maybe I'll do what an kind experiment. Of you, uh, culturing? They're just amphipods. I don't know. Okay. They probably yeah. came with a, a name, but I don't off the top of my head remember what well, they are. Large, they'll be amphipods, probably. They are amphipods. I know that. But if there's a certain type, yeah. I don't remember what it is. It was a top one. The amphipods that, that I had were, were strictly for the fry. But the amphipods, they were for the adults. Right. No, yeah, I get it. These guys are big. I'm, I haven't fed them to anybody. I'm just keeping them and raising them because I got them in the winter time, mm -hmm. and it wasn't written. It's now like the weather here is warm, right? It's 89 degrees today here. So my chillers are running. I got to wear my little seahorse dress. See, I have a few little seahorse dresses so you can see the seahorse. I can't see print. it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to make you big because it, you're – the live is covering it. Can you oh see? Oh my gosh! The little shift dress with seahorses. I found it on Etsy. Love and it. I actually got it last year, but it was the end of the season. So I hadn't worn it till just now. <laughs> Do it one more time. It finally, it, got, it finally got warm enough. So lift it up one more time so we can see. Can you see? That is so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, she's that yeah, seamless a whisperer. Yeah, it's a little big, but it, 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 it's cute. That's awesome. And so anyway, so it's warm here right now. It's hot in the valley. It's 101 today. Up here where I live in the foothills, you could call it, or low mountains, it's 89. But then tomorrow's supposed to get cloudy and we're supposed to have a high of 67 and rain on Saturday. So... <laughs> Right. So still, still kind of crazy. I'm still um, working on my display tank. I'm waiting for the darn K1 to cycle, but it seems to be stuck in the nitrites right yep. now. It has stayed at two for the nitrite level for, yep. I want to say it's probably been six or eight weeks at that in nitrites. And I've not, I haven't added anything to it. I've left it alone. I and mean, should I add any more bacteria or would, just leave it alone or change the water or what? what personally, should I I'd add a little bit more ammonia just till you detect it again to see if it'll kick the uh, process going again. Well, Dan's oh. big instruction was do not put more ammonia in until the nitrates until the are gone. Nitrites are gone. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've always heard. But I mean, that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting take on it. Yeah. I do still have more of the bottled bacteria in the fridge. It is older. It's, it's expired by a couple months. So I don't know if that's, that may be. I, I would get, I, if it were me, okay. If it were me, Ray just gave a good suggestion. I mean, Dan's method, we, we talk on this channel all the time, you guys, there's so many ways to get things done. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many ways. So we give our experiences and what worked for us. And, you know, when we bring in Dan or someone like that, we're bringing in an expert, but it, it's still, if, if something's working for you, it's working. Don't sweat it. But I'm too old it, school. I've never, ever used bacteria. Right. So yeah, it, see, it, when I first started, I didn't use bacteria either. Not till after I met you guys. So I know you can do it without it, but yeah, right. it just takes longer. Right. But so this is 
so long with the bacteria. I'm like, okay, so because I didn't realize you can still add bacteria when it's in the nitrite stage. That's what I was going to add. So absolutely, you can still add more bacteria. Um, I personally would get new. It's not that expensive. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, you can get Dr. I can Tim's. I get the pink stuff first. at the pet store. I don't have to get Dr. Tim's or any fancy one. Well, right. well. Because that I mean, stuff is expensive. <laughs> well, uh, the I hear you. It's just that. I bought for like 25 bucks, I want to say. Well, Dr. T- a little bottle of Dr. Tim's is like six bucks. So Is it? This is, yeah. this is the one that Cheryl said to get. Oh, oh wait, wait, hey, 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 hey. It's Turbo it's, Star. That's what No, it no, is. no, that's Fritz. I, that was, yeah. we keep, we, we're talking over each other, but I was going to say the two that I recommend are, are Dr. Tim's and Fritz. That's it. Because yeah. the other ones, at least to my knowledge, I've not used mm-hmm. them all, but the ones that I have tried, like that you get at a pet store, usually don't work. We've had the discussions before endlessly. We're not going to go into it now. But there is a difference between the types of bacteria they're using and the process in which they get it in the bottle, right? So the two now that I have- the rollout tank, though, I used the cheap pet store stuff, and it cycled really fast. Weren't but you using my, my it's the API stuff? Is what hey, I use. I'm not saying anything bad about API, but didn't you use rock from the other tank? I'm trying to remember. No. Okay. No, there's a grow out tank. I didn't bring anything from the other tank. I started okay. it by itself just so it would be sterile, you know, and separate from anything. So it was it all its own stuff. But um, the Fritz Turbo Start, I have, I want to say it's been in the refrigerator all this time, but it expired in March. And that's okay, well, what I started the K1 with around the beginning of March. So it was just right about the expiration date of the Fritz turbo start when I started the K one. And mm-hmm. now we're like, what, almost three months in close to. Okay, like so, so, so that's crazy. So let's talk about that in one second and we can talk about the expiration date, but um, the seahorse corner did say biospira is good. That's the API brand, right? I think I, uh, no, uh, Seahorse no, no, no. Corner, is that the API brand? Because I think it I is. It doesn't ring a bell, so I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll go All look. Right. But I was going to say, one of the problems people also have is they have, there's a difference. Um, and I, I mean, I admit it, guys, I do like Dr. Tim. I, I love Fritz, too. I've not mm-hmm. tried some of the brands we're talking about, so I can't it's say that they're bad. maybe they're good. But I do want to say he did a lecture on the fact that the bacteria is different for freshwater and saltwater. So if you're going to get bacteria, don't try not to get one that's fits all tanks because it's not true. They're different bacteria that the tank needs in saltwater. Um, but seahorse corner is giving a thumbs up to biospira and Shyla says she uses uh, Marin. Now tropic Marin, I know is a good company too. When we did the women in reefing event at Macna, um, that was one of the giveaways is some Tropic Marin. Oh. Uh, so go ahead. Instant Ocean. Um, yeah, Heather's saying it's made by Instant Ocean and they sell it at Petco. I think that is what I used. Gotcha. Okay. Well, see, the last time I tried to use a product besides the two I've mentioned, they're not sponsors of this channel. And I probably should stop saying the names of these companies. But um, the last time I used... Um, anything from, I, I, I have a pet smart. I know that's different also than a pet co, but it did not work for me. That could have been for a multiple number of reasons. And it was multiple years ago. So maybe they've improved it. Maybe they've separated salt water from fresh water. The one I used was an all in one and it didn't do anything. So good to know that, um, Biospira, I think she called it works mm-hmm. and Tropic Marin works, but now let's decide, um, what, or let's discuss what Holly was just saying. What if it's expired? What does that mean? Is it going to do anything or not? Who knows? Well, if it's like medicines, there's uh, a caution always, um, when they give a date for a medicine, for instance, uh, or if you're talking Mm -hmm. food products, 
there's always a cushion in there so that uh, if you do use it a little bit afterwards, it's still going to be okay. Uh, if you use it a lot after, it's probably still going to be okay, but the, the level of effectiveness will be considerably degraded. Right, but hang on, hang on, because on food, tip, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but typically with food, it's a sell-by date. So it needs to be sold by this date, but it could, you know, you can keep but it for longer. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Label on it's it's bottle it's bacteria, it's an expiration, it's EXP, expiration date. You know, this bacteria is, probably can't live past this date. Now, no, with probiotics that are, hang on, with probiotics like Mike F or whatever that are, you know, I don't want to say sand, but are ground up or whatever, that's a different story. But what do you guys think about the bottled bacteria? Ray, you haven't used it, but I would still want your thoughts. Uh, every, everything has a date, uh, except for things that uh, there is no way anything's going to degrade. Like if you, you sell a rock, you know it's not going to degrade. But anything that uh, is going to degrade in time uh, pretty well requires a date on it through regulations. And the date is always... Uh, a little under it's always uh a better but and often by far than uh what the actual product uh can um get to truth I'm and i agree right. with you wait i agree with you 100 percent. and just just real quick salty reef we're so glad to see you jump in if you want but i'm just so glad to see you we got we got to catch up dude i talked earlier about i'm not getting notifications but i looked and you haven't sent me any messages we got to catch up but um, and jump in if you feel like it. But he said aqua vitro, right? That's sea chem, right? Uh, aqua vitro seed is also a great starter bacteria. So you guys got to remember the last time that I started a tank with bacteria besides the 40 gallon all in one. And I just used the products I was used to was, oh my God, 10 years ago, eh, maybe less than that. But I'm just saying I haven't had to start a tank from scratch in a very, very long time. So back then, there weren't very many products on the market that worked. I trusted the two, Tim's and Fritz. Now, all these other companies have, you know, come up with ways to make good bottle bacteria. So shame on me for saying there's only two, for sure, because there are multiple. They have obviously worked for multiple people. But Salty Reef does say a living microorganism can only live so long without a food source right so if they're in the bottle they figured out ways to keep them moving and thriving and living or dormant or whatever however they do i'm not a scientist i wish i could get dr tim to come on the show <laughs> maybe some maybe says best by march 13th of 22. so it's best by so it's not expired interesting in my but okay so last question holly about your unique situation with this particular bucket of K1 or, or container of K1, mm -hmm. you put in too much ammonia, right? Yes, I okay. did. And ammonia got to off the charts or? No, no, no. It, I want to say it was, pro I think it was like between three and four, right oh, in okay. there. And bad. so I left it and the nitrites, when I started measuring nitrites, I want to say they were at this, they were at the end of the nitrite chart. They were on the chart, but like the very highest nitrites you could have on the chart. And they've only backed down a little bit. I think the highest on the chart is four or five, something like that. Right. And they're at, they're at two now, but they got to two and they've been at two for weeks now. Right. Well, the one, the two things I, I can think of to say. Anything other than I'm, I'm topping it off with water because the water keeps evaporating. Right. In the bucket. The two things I can think of is I really wish Cheryl was here because Cheryl has brought up multiple times that when you're, when she's done K1 with ammonia, the nitrite, if you're using API or using API. Yes. Test, for some reason, the nitrates always look crazy. Like she ever, have you done a reading twice in a row? But my readings have been normal. I mean, they match the colors en enough to wear. And she said that's only in the first um, couple days. Oh, okay. When you add the ammonia, it's not throughout the, 
throughout the cycling. So it's yeah. I can read it. That's not not an issue. Well, you and know, you did you. Colors. Well, I know, but I think she said a couple of times that they just like one thing. The, the only suggestion I was going to make is test twice in a row. See if it comes up the same. If it does, mm -hmm. it's right. Period. I've just yeah. done that before because I couldn't believe a reading, you know, so I tested again. Yeah. No, yeah. I've been testing it. Also, I think two you, months you, past you, the best my date is going is pushing it too much, so Holly. Gotcha. You Thank you. He said he thinks two months past the best by date is pushing it. Yeah. And that's that's the other thing I was gonna say is is this the bacteria you used in the in the it, to begin with? Is it the same? In bottle? the K1, yes. And okay. it was expiring right about the same, the same time. Because let me grab my calendar. I want to say, I mean, it's been a while. I've been so busy and I basically ignore it most of the time. I don't even measure it but once a week anymore because it's on nitrites and it's slow. But I want to say it was March when I started. Let me grab the calendar because I wrote it down and then I can tell you exactly how many weeks it's been. Salty okay, Reef, can I ask so a much. question? Wait, hang on. Salty Reef, thanks so much. There is that like button. Make sure to hit it. And there's a super chat option if the information we're sharing is helpful. If this you have is a what question, I want to ask about. If you have a question, I've make sure this, that, wait, hang I've on seen right. this before about a like button, and I have no idea what it is. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Give me one second. But if you have a question about anything, whether it be seahorse, whatever you want, I just heard somebody like your super chat, but um, you know, you can easily ask it in the comment section. I can see it on Facebook and on YouTube. We will discuss whatever your question is. There's no stupid question. You can see us get into debates on here. So for sure, ask all your questions, especially on open chat, because we're here to answer your questions and just share. Okay. And okay. Holly. So I was wrong. Okay. So it hasn't been as long as I thought. It just feels like it. Right, right. So I actually, I started the K1 reactor on April 2nd. And okay. then on April, by April 11th, my ammonia was zero and the nitrites were reading at two. That has not changed. So it's been one, two, three, four, five. We're in the sixth week now. Okay, Since so let me I tried to read too. Let me respond to that. Here's a couple of things. I'm not I'm not I'm not as good at this as Cheryl and Dan, but Dan has talked repeatedly about how nitrate nitrite, excuse me, the bacteria that consumes nitrite grows much slower than the bacteria that consumes ammonia. So I personally think that because you overdose the <laughs> you overdose, you overdose yeah, the ammonia. I have done that, but maybe, and I don't know if, if we talked uh, endlessly about this um, when it first happened, but I think maybe when that happened to me, the advice was to do a big, huge water change and kind of start over, not completely, but kind of, and we didn't tell you that, so that's not fair to bring up. I'm just saying if that happens like to you, it. that might be what you do, start over. I'll, I'll agree with that. Okay, so if you put too much ammonia in and you've got four of ammonia, just start over because the ammonia is going back. The back, I keep saying the ammonia, the bacteria that's consuming the ammonia is going crazy and multiplying and it's great and da 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 da. But the nitrite, the bacteria that consumes the nitrite grows so much slower that it's like they've, the, the ammonia has been converted to nitrite and the bacteria that consumes the nitrite can't freaking catch up. So it's forever. So, yeah. But so maybe case, do probably, like a couple gallons out of the five, you, know, you think? At this point, at this point, what I would do personally, let me know if you think differently in the comment section. But at this point, because at this point, you've been going so long, you've got too it's much. six weeks of nitrites go. now. I'm wondering, well, maybe they're going to drop soon in another Wait, week or two. Here is my personal suggestion. Get some new bacteria. I don't care what brand you get. Okay. Just get some new and bacteria and there. then let us know next week if it worked. Because I okay. think if you added new bacteria, you would see the mm -hmm. nitrates down in a couple days at most. All right. I'll try Maybe that. I'll try that to start and then we'll check in next week and see. Yeah. And if anybody else has thoughts. Yeah. 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 I've never had a system installed on me before, but 
uh, in um, the non seahorse part in, of salt water that I've been a part of for decades. Uh, I've heard of stalling there, and the general thing that I can recall now is they did a major water change, and uh, that kick started and moved it along. Well, and that's what Holly actually asked. So we can do a poll. Which one do you think? But Holly, you well, don't I'll start to... with the bacteria and wait a week and then yep. see what yes. else they did next week. And then we'll go from there. That's it. That's exactly <laughs> what I would we'll do. Go thing by thing. Because I'm not in a hurry, really. I'm just waiting right. for it. Right. I pulled a bunch more rock out of that tank, though, today. Yeah. And well, I've okay. just. Well, the thing is, as Dandy's getting older, he's having trouble, uh, more trouble moving around the tank. So I opened up more space on the side of the tank where he likes to hang out. And instead of the rock being there, I put an artificial hitch and, you know, his little dish there. But it's mostly an open area so he has plenty of room to move around and hang out with his buddies and chase Sadie, which is his favorite activity. <laughs> so so they were all investigating over there today and enjoying it. And they like right. you know having the open space. And Sadie's she doesn't hide anymore like she used to. She's more social. So she hadn't that was her cave was what it was in those rocks. Yeah. And she doesn't, she hasn't been in there in months, so she's not oh. missing it. So, <laughs> so they're all fine. And I still have rock on the other side of the tank where the goby and the shrimps like to hang out. So, well, that's why that, everybody should all, you know, if you're interested in uh, this kind of change to your tank, you should definitely go and follow Holly because she's doing it right. She's removing the rock slowly. She's cycling K1, which obviously she's having an issue with, but there's already so much media in her sump. She has other media besides the rock, so she's slowly removing the rock so it doesn't cause some sort of crisis in the tank or ammonia. Yeah, it's been or reading. It hasn't changed anything since I started yep. taking out the rocks. Because you're doing it right, because you're doing it slowly and you have other media. You have other bio. And then she's going to add the K1 to kind of compensate for the rock. But because she's doing it slowly, it's just fine. It's fine. Seahorse Corner, I see your question, but I did want to really quick jump back to Ray's question. Ray, you asked what a like button was and super chat? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, don't, what, I don't even know what super chat is. Okay, I'm going to tell you both. So real quick, it whether you're on Facebook, it's better on YouTube, but whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, as you watch the video, whether it's live or later, Underneath the screen, you have a like button. That like button just shows me that you enjoyed the episode. So it's just nice to see that people enjoyed the episode. So when you hit that like button, there's also a... I'm looking right now and I don't see it. Okay, now you're going to make me show it. Dag on it. Hang on. <laughs> All right, so, oops. Maybe it's hidden by the, uh, the words that are on there. Maybe. Let me see. Okay. So we're on Wine Wednesday. Hi, everyone. Mark oh, Barton here. I'm getting an ad. Hang on. But I'm going to share it real quick. And we're going to get back to seahorses really fast. I just, just I never nice show this stuff, and I should. So when you hit that so like button, pause it. there's all. All right. Okay. So let me screen share just real quick, because I know a lot of people don't know this. And I've got a lot of stuff open, so let me see. Okay. So when you look at this, oh, it's not going to show either, because you do see the thing. Oh, no, it does. Right here. Do you see seven, six watching now? A little thumbs up and a four. And then a thumbs down and dislike. And a share button. Do you see those? No. Well, I'm on YouTube. Well, look at the screen. On I am. I'm see? looking at YouTube right now. The bottom line is uh, the pause button, uh, the advance button, uh, the mute. Underneath that. There's, There's another one. underneath it on YouTube. Okay. Well, I think I, I'll show you later on our own, Ray. But um, okay. basically, the thumbs up is the like button. It says, I like this, if you can see it in the screen right now. So when you do that, I'm not, you know, when you do that, it just helps me know that you enjoyed the episode. 
and look <laughs> look at my lovely face making some weird face but anyways stop sharing that okay and then super chat i can't actually show you um but i'll try to do a little clip to show you basically what it is is when you're commenting on youtube wait wait close your chat and it looks like a thumbs up is okay salty reef said close your chat and it looks like a thumbs up salty reef said super chat is in the bottom right corner and I have to close, oh, I have to close the chat to show the thumbs up. All right, well, I'll try to do a little clip showing it. I never try to press that because we just want people to come. But it is nice when people like it and show that they're interested in the topic or whatever we're chatting about or speaker or whatever. It just, it, it's nice to see that people liked it. And then, all, and there, okay. this applies to Facebook too. There's a like button. I and then it. also um, super chatting is if you, feel that we answered your question or you just want to support the channel, you can super chat and that's like sending a couple bucks just to support the channel. And it does come directly to the channel. So, um, you know, no games or no YouTube games or whatever, but it's not required guys. It's just a nice thing. And thank you salty for bringing it up because it does help because we do often spend money on making videos and getting everybody here and stuff. But that's that. Now let's it, go it back. To, uh, Ray, I'll help you with it later. Sorry. Go ahead. It did work when uh, okay. when Salty said uh, to hide that uh, the chat. I hid that, yeah. and then I brought the chat back, and that line is still there. Thank you, Salty. So yeah. just it's thumbs up. Just saying you're doing a good job. We like the conversation. You answered our question. The conversation was helped me in some way. And I understand some weeks it doesn't, you know, if we're talking about the weather, <laughs> you know, I get it. But if we're talking about your question or, you know, something Holly says or Dan says or Cheryl Ray, anybody or me, heaven forbid, uh, says something that helps you, you know, just to say, I like that. Thank you for sharing it. It just helps. That's all. And I can't read all of those comments right now. But and yeah, as Salty said, the likes help put push notifications on the YouTube algorithm. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember, guys, it's all about algorithms. So we appreciate so much when you subscribe. I don't ever try to ask for more. But as Salty's pointing out, you know, when you like it, super chat, that kind of stuff, it ends up making it come up to more people. So more mm -hmm. people get what we're doing here. But OK, I'm going to stop. Thank you, Salty, for coming. Thank you for explaining. Mwah. We love you. I'm going to message you on the side. And then back to Holly's question. Now I forgot what we were, where we, where we even were. No, uh, Seahorse Corner had a question. That's what it was. Um, she wanted to know. <coughs> and, it, and she meant to say, can you squeeze some old floss from your tank, swish around your old sock? Maybe that would help. Yeah, but this is a dirty filter sock. And the but no, I'm talking to you, Holly. And in what you're talking about with the K1, it's not yeah. a tank. So explain yeah, what you got. Bucket. It's a bucket. So would the bacteria from an old filter sock help the bucket with the K1 in it? It's going into that tank. So I don't worry about contaminating it. But would it help or would it do really anything? What do you guys think? Is there a point to that? I'm so sorry. I was reading a comment. Can you say that again? I'm so okay. Sorry. So what she's talking about, okay, the K1 is cycling in a five-gallon bucket. When it's done, mm -hmm. it's going to go into the sump of my display tank. What she's saying is try taking a dirty sock from the display tank and swishing it around in the bucket with the K1. Would the bacteria from that do anything in, in the bucket with the K1? Is that worth a try or is that not really a thing that would help? What do you guys think? I don't, I don't think so. Ray? Uh, hold on here. I, I screwed up. I know we're trying to do too many things. Trying to find the super chat. And it wasn't paying any <laughs> He's looking for the super chat. Don't worry about super chat, Ray. You don't you don't get to because you're already actually on the you're show. You're already so, a right? super chat, Ray. You're super. Yeah, exactly. You're already a super chat. But My wife always told Holly, me I would never shut up. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Holly, you're basically asking if you took a sock from the tank, swooshed it in the K1 bucket, would that bacteria or bad or good or bad stuff help? That's the question. Uh right. 
or did I miss it? Yeah, I, no, I, that's it, it what she said. Some, but it uh, depends on how much is uh, on that uh, floss, I guess. I've never used floss in a tank, so I don't know. Yeah, or a sock, she's saying. I use filter socks. So she's yeah. saying take your well, dirty filter sock, filter sock and push it around. Okay. Wait a minute. But, but Ray, no, no, no. I think her point is, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, uh, seahorse corner but i think her point is more organics because you know the socks full of gunk and and she's not saying dump the gunk she's That's saying it around the in top. there well right. how, how's the gunk going to help it's organics yeah but uh, it has but does it that has help? To decay more in order to uh, uh produce the ammonia to get that bacteria going and then to get the nitrate bacteria going so uh it's not a quick solution not not if i'm understanding it's not really it's probably not going to make a significant difference anyway is yeah. what i would rather saying. just add if add the bacteria. Add bacteria add the bacteria or it, and if that doesn't work we'll try water changes and maybe mm -hmm. even adding ammonia as, as ray said earlier but let's try the bacteria first and as seahorse corner mm -hmm. said you change your socks daily, so it probably wouldn't make any difference anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, today's would have. Today was tank cleaning day. Oh. <laughs> and to, um, to uh, really quick to DSMV, I don't uh, mind saying hi, Memer, but I'm not looking for donations. That's not what this is about. So just to make that clear. All right. So, Seahorse Corner said, bacteria meant not gunk. Right, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I tried to say it right. I probably didn't. But I meant, like, you're not talking about, I just wanted to be clear, you weren't talking about, like. <laughs> no, dumping the dirty sock in there. She's tank, talking a, about the bacteria from the, the crap, from my display it. tank, somehow transferring the bacteria from my display tank into right. the bucket. And a way to do that, she would say, would be to swish the filter sock around in there. The right. Filter and, and you know what? It's, better. It, well, I, what did you say, Ray? The filter he thinks the filter work sock better sock because they call me a lot more bacteria. The filter sock itself has very little in the way of bacteria on it. Uh, okay, so how like about if bacteria. I threw a bio ball in there? Real quick, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. I just want to say one thing real quick because. It's not a bad idea. It's an actually really good idea. And I've never done it, but why not stick the rock you're taking out of the tank mm -hmm. into the bucket? Because that's going to hold the most bacteria. Yeah, it that's might hold what I was just about that, to but... say, or a handful of yeah. the bio balls or some yeah. of my filter meat in there. I like the idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. I, I like the rock idea, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're taking it out anyways. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with the K1, I mean, depends on your Well, today's situation. rock is in bleach now, so I can't do that. It would have to be next week or the week after. Right. So I might as well right. start with the bacteria. <laughs> well, and, and to be clear for anybody watching, I wouldn't have, have advised that if you're trying to cycle clean K1 media. media mm -hmm. Because as Cheryl and Dan and I have done, it's, you know, when you're cycling clean K1 media, it's usually for a new system or for a fry tank or something like that, that you don't want to, as Holly yeah, described yeah. earlier, transfer anything from one tank to another. So I would not advise putting rock or anything from a tank in there to or get the bacteria. Yeah. But in Holly's case, it's she for is established pulling the, she's pulling the rock from the tank and adding K1 to compensate for the rock. So pulling the rock, it's in the same water, same tank. Whatever's in there is going to mm -hmm. be on the K1 eventually. Yeah. So using that to help this, I think that's a really good idea, um, Seahorse Corner. And and Seahorse Corner said she's done that to jumpstart a tank. So really good point. Mm -hmm. I think we should do this in steps because the other thing is we talk about a lot of ideas on this channel, but when you do too many things at once. You don't know what then worked. You don't know what worked. Yeah. Right. We just jinx. Jinx. <laughs> but so I would say try the bottle bacteria, new new bottle bacteria. Mm -hmm. Don't care the brand. Try that. If it hasn't gone down in two days, 
then we can talk on the side maybe, or maybe yeah, after two days, that. we can try the rock idea. And then after two days, if that doesn't work, we'll be back almost back to wine Wednesday and we can try Ray's water change idea. Cause we know mm -hmm. that has worked in the past. We're just trying to be fast. About mm -hmm. it. So I like it. Good points guys. Good points. And, uh, uh, I'm trying to follow the conversation. Salty here. Reef is saying, what if you dose nitrate and phosphate to help level out the nitrite? Well, nitrate is uh, an end stage, so I can't see it affecting something beforehand. The phosphate, I yeah, don't think the it reduces the nitrate, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't. What'd you say about phosphate? Phosphate, right? I can't see it doing a thing to it. No, I don't think they're. They're related. No. Oh, I think not phosphates are cycle. Cool. But it's I not part of the cycle. Right, right, right. No, you're right. You're right. I just, I think he's thinking because phosphate's so related to organics that cause yeah. algae. Yeah, but it's a separate so, thing. It is, but, and the only reason, um, I'm trying to, I'm, hmm. That's something to think over. I get what you're trying to say, Salty. Yeah, I really do. I do too. I can see it. But when but, I think about the process, I kind of think right. like Ray, the nitrite's right. turning into the nitrate. So the nitrate's right. not going to go back to the No, it doesn't go back. Yeah. It doesn't go back. No, you're right. It doesn't go backwards. So It's yeah. not going to turn it, around it, and make it. It made us all sit here and go, Huh. <laughs> so, it's not a bad idea, but back to science I, I class know. for us. <laughs> no, I think well, you're better off uh, a, using okay. Kelly's suggestion of putting a rock in or getting your uh, fresh bacteria yeah. and trying to. You're yeah. better off. At least you well, know that something Ray, that can work. I don't think Ray ever agreed with me on this channel, so I'm like, well, I, agree with something I it, agree it, too. If it's I a plus, like too. if it sticks with what my mind sees it working, uh, it's just that my mind also works to the KISS principle. Keep it simple, Keep stupid. It. And yeah. to me, that means why bother with bacteria in the first place? You know, mm -hmm. I can see people wanting to do things in a hurry, but I've got other ways I can do it in a hurry mm -hmm. and not worry about bacteria. Mm hmm like I told yeah, you, like for problem. me, I have time to wait. You know, I'm not in a hurry oh, to start right. a tank. Like you told us what, Ray? With the Barbary tank that I started up, I put the seahorses in the first day I started the tank up. And how would you do that again? It had to adding, do water changes. No, no I kept add, adding the Coromax to it until uh, the system uh, uh, finished cycling. Okay, never mind. I'm cutting Ray off. We don't advise that to anybody. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. You can do that. You really can. But you got to know what you're doing. It's it's not something you got to know what you're doing. Yeah, it's not for someone that uh, right. hasn't had some experience to, to know how it works. Right. And I can admit when I had my situation just like Holly's, but she's smart enough to be cycling her K1 in a media situation, like in a bucket, I actually cycled a tank, thought I was game, thought I was good, got my reed eye, put them in the tank, and I had nitrites. And I was like, oh, my God, how? How? And I just hadn't cycled it enough. Who knows, right? Who knows? Maybe they, they're, they were big. They were beautiful. Who knows? But I had to go back and fix the problem, and I've kind of talked about it in the past episodes, but... Yeah, I did use Prime. Absolutely. I've used Prime on fry tanks. Mm -hmm. And Prime is kind of equivalent to what, um, what do you say the product you use was, Ray? Sorry? Oh, Coromax. Coromax is a product that I use mainly yeah. because uh, uh, the offshore companies that were shipping fish over here all the time, the best product they found in putting in the bags for shipping these things was the Coromax. That was the best right. brand of that type. And because these companies all thought it was uh, better than anything else, I figured, well, I might as well use what uh, is best. Mm -hmm. And uh, I buy in bulk anyway because the amount that I was using. Um, now I'm. Can you still get Chloramax? Pardon? Can you still get Chloramax? Well, I imagine so. I ordered it out of the States. 
I'm just looking it up because I, I hadn't seen it. No, you sure the hell heck can. Yeah. No, that's Clorox. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use Clorox. <laughs> Don't buy Clorox, no, I buy, please. I buy it in, uh, I think, trying to think, two kilo pails. It's a powder. Hmm. I'm looking. but And I'll look later and update you guys. And I'm not saying, you know, Clormax, I feel, is equivalent to Prime. And there are other um, items like that. I feel like it's equivalent. Maybe Ray can tell me different. But um, I personally use Prime because I don't have Chloramax available near me or, you know, I've not seen it. Um, but, yeah, it does work. And Seahorse Corner, are you saying it does work about the Chloramax or Prime or about adding the nitrite or nitrates and phosphates dosing? I think she's um, talking sure about the Chloramax. Okay. And it does work, guys. Yeah. Nobody's trying to say it doesn't. It's just not a good idea for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Because I, when I had the situation with the red eye, where I had to dose prime because I had nitrites, I knew, as Cheryl has talked about in the past, what to look for. You know, like, you know, you dose prime, you know there's nitrites. They're high. That's not good. It's hurting the seahorse. It's not killing them, but hurting them. Can't eventually kill them. You don't want that situation. So I'm dosing prime. They're not feeling it anymore, but you can still tell. Are the nitrites so high that the prime's not even working because they stopped eating? Are they acting differently or are their colors changing? Someone new shouldn't do that. Um, and, and Seahorse Corner said prime for day one. What do you mean by that? Do you always use Prime on day one? I'm curious. And I'll copy the link you just posted, Ray. I will copy it and post it. That in was comments. just the first one that came to it. That's not where I get mine from, but I can't gotcha. remember the, the name of the one with this cognitive impairment. But uh, that's just the first right. one that came up when I Googled it. So, Ray, did you use Chloramax like on all tanks or just when you had a problem? I've used it. Uh, well, I was using it when I was shipping seahorses. I would put it in and send it to uh, the store that was doing the shipping for me. And then he, like he would just uh, keep it in the same bags and uh, put it in box and get his shipper to ship it. Cause I couldn't, as an individual, I can't ship by courier here. Right. He would ship them for me. And of course he got a cut of it, but. Uh, right. But that was. Well, no, no. The, when I ship. The way the game worked. No, when I when I shipped seahorses, I always put a drop of prime in the bag. Yeah. I know that's not everybody's method, but I always have. I don't know if Holly has or not. Mm -hmm. I have to actually, guys, I fed the seahorses before we started, and I just realized it's been like an hour. So <laughs> I'm in big trouble because I usually only go 10 minutes. So I've got to go, go hurry up and it out. It's a 40 gallon. I don't have the good pump that has the feed mode, unfortunately, because it's the all-in-one. So I got to go uh, turn them back on. It'll take me just a second. But yeah, I want to know um, if you other, if Holly, if you use Prime and in what, or or mm -hmm. his brand, in what situations you use them in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to let you guys chat while I go well, do this. Actually, real. Holly's going to yeah. be on her own for a sec here because I got to run downstairs to feed mine because 9 o'clock I was supposed to do it and Oops. I didn't. So I'll be okay, so I'll be Holly, it's Holly's seconds. show. You got to talk so, until we get back. I'll be back in so 30 on seconds. This, on the subject of Prime, I've used Prime to um, ship seahorses. Like Kelly said, I put a couple drops in a bag when I ship. And other than that, I used it in a couple emergency situations. Um, the things I'm thinking of is... Um, Hospital tank when I was busy and didn't have time to do a water change because I had to go to work or something. Same with when I was raising the fry. I, I raised them in a grow out tank that was really too small for them and wasn't completely cycled. So... I did major water changes about every other day. And when I couldn't do a water change because of my time schedule, I used Prime and then did the water change, you know, when I was able to.
I'm checking comments to see if we missed anything, but I don't know. You did see good. You did good. I was talking I was about Ron, okay. but I don't see any other questions right now. I don't know. Good. I obviously didn't hear exactly what you just said, but I'm sure I agree with it. Basically, and I then, said emergency situations. And then yep. you know, when I didn't have time to do a water change, like when I had the when I first started raising fry and I didn't have an adequate grow out tank, the way I managed it was I had a 29 gallon tank that was meant for fresh water. It didn't have adequate filtration for the seahorses. So I used to do large water changes. And if I read ammonia and I had to go to work and didn't have time to do a water change, then I would add a little prime and then do the water change later. So that's yep. that's the way I used it. Other okay. than shipping, I used it for that also. Wait a minute, Ray's showing us Here's something. Here's the Hang form, uh, I was wrong, it's not two kilos, it's 10 pounds. Whoa. Uh, Chloramex. Yeah, Here's how you spell the Chloramex. Yeah, that's why Is I have it an powder? interesting spelling, yeah. Is it a powder, Ray? Yes. Yeah, he says. Do you have to, because prime is a liquid. And I know well, CCAM has to. Prime you can get in powder form too. But this, really? okay. this is uh, chemically a bit different. Does the same kind of thing, but apparently does it better. That's why I went with that rather than prime. Wait, wait, who said it did it better than prime? Uh, the, the chemist on Reef Central at the time. And really? uh, the uh, companies that uh, were shipping the uh, the fish from offshore, like Asian, the, the Vietnamese uh, sources and so on, um, they all used the Coramex rather than Prime. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. So Coramex, just to cover it real quick, none of us are representatives of either product, but with Coramex, it not only does... It not only can act as a water clarifier, like um, it's not clarifier. Somebody help me. It's the, you know, it can be used as if you're using tap water, you use prime and then your water's good. So it removes all the irons and the metals and all that crap or, or makes them neutral so they don't affect the tank. And then it also can completely... I don't want to say kill, but it makes, it makes, no, I'm saying it wrong. It makes ammonia turn into ammonium, it which finds doesn't hurt. It finds it in a different form, so it's not poison. Yes, thank you. But Chloramax does that better? Prime does it too, but uh, Chloramax, generally speaking, I don't remember all the, the things now. Like, this is a couple decades ago, eh? Sure. When I started using it. And uh, there was a discussion on Reef Central at the time, and uh, it originally started on, on the on the reef part, but then it got uh, moved into uh, Randy Holmes Farley's discussion, and uh, got carried on further there. And that's when I found out the things that I did find out. I just don't have the capacity to remember it now. Well, sure, no. Listen, Ray, nobody's going to doubt Randy Holmes. <laughs> what was I that? Mean, I wouldn't be. I said I wouldn't either at two decades ago. <laughs> right, right. But the bottom line is nobody's going to doubt Randy. He's a genius. I mean, right. That's interesting to me. I think the only reason I got onto Prime myself, and I'm glad it does work similarly, but if Clormax is better in some way, I, I'm going to find some and try some and try to do a comparison. And not that you really could, but just, you know, well, I'll know tell if, you, uh... Prime has saved my fish numerous times as i said it can be used by people who are using tap water to i can't think of the word what is the word when you use tap water and you use a conditioner dechlorinate conditioner a dechlorinate dechlorinate and condition right yeah you're right you're right thank you holly so it, it can be used as that i've never used it as that because i use rodi or distilled but I had a, I, I've told this before. I had a tank with freshwater discus that are very sensitive to any of this stuff. And I, and I bred angelfish, freshwater angelfish that were very sensitive to this stuff. And with the discus tank, one time I came home 
they were all like either lying on the floor or laying against stuff. It was aw awful. It, I was so, I was like, I don't even know what to do. How big of a, what, you know, I don't, I didn't know what was wrong. So do I do a hundred percent water change? What do I have? It was a 55 gallon tank. Do I have 55 gallons of water? No, I don't, you know? So I was like, shit. And I dumped some prime in and I'm calling everybody. I think I even got on WebM, uh, not WebMD. What was uh, Randy's website? You mean I on the Reef Central? Central? No, it wasn't Reef Central. Well, r r is what he went to afterwards. See, was, I'm stuck right uh, now, you guys. It was the chemistry forum on Reef Central where I first met him. No, no, no. I, it wasn't Randy. It was... Oh my gosh, I feel like such a piece of crap. Who was the gentleman who recently passed? That was it was terrible that he passed. I think it was Bob. Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. I'm so sorry. When I think of his name, I'm gonna post it in the comments. But we even talked about him at Magna. He is the one that's how I met him, is because I went on his website and I was like, what do I do about this? Da 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 da. And he gave me the advice and I after I had already dumped the prime in equal to the tank, I looked back and the, the discus are swimming again. And I realized this is fresh water, but it was just, it was incredible. I couldn't believe it. I mean, they were laying on the ground. If you've ever had freshwater discus, they're so delicate and they were up swimming like nothing was wrong. And of course I had to do future steps with prime. At least I don't know about Clormax, but with prime, you have two days, you have, 48 hours top. It will um, take care of the ammonia, take care of, uh, you know, the iron or any, whatever's going on for 24 to 48 hours. Within that time, you've got to do something else. It's really just a Band-Aid or like if you're shipping fry, it's to get them to where they're going. It's not a, you know, it's not a, it's not a fix. It's just a Band-Aid so that they don't die. You know what I mean? And I've used it in seahorse tanks. I've used it in my reef. And anytime there's an emergency, as Holly was saying, it, it fixes it. So I'm done rambling, but it was just amazing to watch those discus like be dying and then turn around and they're back up. And I did end up having to do major water changes and, you know, we actually, uh, we figured out that the light that I was using that was sitting above the tank was rusting and it was, I don't know that that's the answer. Nobody, you know, you never know what the actual answer is, but I think that it was leaching a rust or iron or something like that into the tank. I don't know for sure. Could have been something else. Somebody could have sprayed something, who knows, but the prime fixed it and then water changes and they were fine. It was amazing. So I'm done with my story. <laughs> okay. Well, it's great. I, I, we use both of them, and uh, it works great for anybody that's used it, as far as I know. Uh, so I don't have anything against Prime. The only thing I went with is that uh, people much more knowledgeable than I am uh, were preferring the Chloramex, and I went with that. I'm going to go find it. And I just realized I didn't have my video on anymore, guys. Sorry. Well, Reed sells it, and I don't think they would sell something that uh, was an inferior product. Oh, and I definitely – wait, who sells it? Reed Mariculture. Yeah, absolutely not. And I definitely – I want to try it now, you know. I just hadn't seen it in the stores that were surrounding me. But um sounds like they work similar, but if Formax works better, heck, you know. Yeah, cool. Well, it looks like better for bulk situations because it's powder. You know, yeah. And so much. That's kind of what my impression is just from Ray showing it because, I mean, Prime, though, still, Prime only takes a tiny bit in my experience yeah, with it. You just made a great point. You have to shake the prime every time you use it. It's very, well, I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. But, you know, when you, you have to shake the prime to make sure all the ingredients are mixed up. So with the Chloramax, right, how do you put it in the tank? Do you just dump it in or do you have to dissolve it? Or? No, I dissolved it uh, and then put it in. I weigh it out uh, to what, I, uh, what I'm going to use. I, 
when I was using a lot, I, I put it in two liter pop bottles. So I mixed it up in that and, but there was no settlement or anything. So you didn't have to mix it up nice. on a regular basis. Now, maybe if, if you're in a cooler area or something, maybe some would precipitate out or if you're making the solution too strong, but I made it up to a certain specific uh, uh, weight or concentration so that uh, when I put it in the, the bags with the seahorses, I knew how much water is in there and I knew how much of this to add to the bag at the same time. Now, when I did the, uh, uh, the tank from starting from day one, uh, it was a little bit different. I had stuff already mixed up and all I did was uh, dumped it in and I kept testing uh, through the day usually three times a day I would test for uh, uh, ammonia. If there was any slight uh, coloration indicating ammonia, then I put in, I dumped in more of the Coramex. And I just kept doing that until it got to be further and further apart for when I had to add anything. And uh, then eventually uh, I was able to stop it. Oh, now, so the Chloramax, your ammonia test will work because yeah. isn't that well, something first, about probably, with prime? It doesn't work to do an no. ammonia test when you have API, prime. API test works with Chloramax. Okay, hmm. awesome to know. I think I've never it probably had the works API with not. prime too. Yeah, I've never yes. had the API test not work with Prime. I think I think it does. I think I've been told that, but it always worked for me. Yeah, come it's to think the, of it, first, the way the test, uh, uh, the maker of the test, there's different ways that it can be uh, chemically uh, made to work. It's whether they test ammonia or ammonium yeah, or but, uh, lump it into one category. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, API one, uh, I never ever had any trouble. Yeah. Gotcha. I didn't either. I know Cheryl has talked endlessly about, um, not endless. I didn't mean it like bad. I just mm -hmm. meant she's talked about it multiple times that with nitrites, sometimes the API mm -hmm. test kit will not work if you're using certain mm -hmm. things and prime being one of them, but mm -hmm. I've never had trouble with it. It always is correct. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but yeah, there is I wouldn't I explanation. Would. I just can't remember right now, but I'm sure you could Google it and find out. Yep, Google it. Absolutely. And, uh, it'll and tell you the, the type that you need uh, to use. Uh, sure. Correct. For, the, uh, for using a prime. Absolutely. And Holly, the other thing is um, wow, it just totally left my brain completely. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God, I was going to ask the question. It totally left my brain. Sorry, guys. Hey, I'm the idiot. Oh, no, 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 I remember. Let's discuss why you wouldn't want to put Prime or Chloramax in your K1 cycling. Why wouldn't you want to do that? What's, there's no need for it. Yeah, I was, there's no need I was for it. Say, well, why would I? <laughs> All we're going to do is right. grind up the ammonia until uh, it gets used. But the the yeah, point I was trying to get to, I, I didn't do it very well, but the point is you have to remember that if you're using Prime or Chloramax in any tank, it's just binding it. Yeah. It's not getting rid yeah, of the it. The product's it's, still there. Yes, it's still there. So if you don't do something, like I told the discus story earlier, I put in the Prime, the discus were fine. It was great. But if I didn't do something about whatever the problem was that was causing the ammonia, it's pointless because it's still sitting there just in a different form, ammonium, well, right? It, it's not going to just sit there. It's going to get used up by the bacteria. And if you're, if, it's just like if you add more uh, ammonia to that tank, uh, whatever you have in the tank, if you've got something producing ammonia, it's the same as if you're just adding ammonia there, that uh, by adding that extra source in there, the ammonia bacteria, the amount are going to grow to be able to handle the new level. The only difference is if you just add the ammonia in there without anything else, then the aquatic uh, life in that tank is uh, usually going to be affected. 
if you sure. if you add brine there and it binds up that extra ammonia, it's now it's in a state that isn't uh, dangerous to the fish. It's not going to burn their gills or anything like that. It's bound up in it, so it's in another compound form. And still, while it's in that compound form, the bacteria can still use it, right, to convert to nitrite. But you're, but wait, you're not suggesting in a tank full of any animal to add ammonia and then add prime, right? No. Okay, okay. Just wanted to make it clear right. that you weren't saying that. He's uh, saying what would happen. Right, me, right. I was doing, I added it in order to uh, to get the uh, whole thing started because it was a sterile tank when I started. Yes. So okay, I, I just wanted ammonia. to make sure you said that. It was just pure ammonia, ammonium chloride, actually. It's a powder that I get at the drugstore. And so I add that, and then I add the Chloramex in order to bind it into the formula that uh, wasn't going to do any damage to my seahorses. And then the bacteria get developed, and they use up that uh, uh, ammonia from uh, the, this bound-up compound. That makes sense? Yeah, but you're saying the in, the, yes. in the tank? Pardon? Yeah. You're saying yes. the seahorse is in the tank? Yeah. Yes, he was using it from day one. He said he was using it to make the ammonia safe I get for the all that. to live in it. But the tank is still cycling off of that. It didn't turn it into another thing. It just made it safe. It was an emergency situation. Yes. Uh, no, I get it. The tank that <laughs> like I had I set up for them, waiting for the shipment, uh, I can't remember what I did now. Some I screwed it up somehow. Right. Anyway, so no, I bring these now. things home, and I've got the 90-gallon tank sitting there for the uh, for all the abs, but I didn't have now I didn't have a tank for the Barbary. Right. So I had six barbs and nowhere to put them. So I put no, them in the 40-gallon tank with a 20-gallon sump, and I added. Actually, I put in some Chloramex first, and then I added the ammonia. And I kept on adding a bit of ammonia through the first day, just a tiny little bit, um, knowing how much Chloramex I had put into it. It gave me an idea of the level of the ammonia that I was uh, actually getting into it, because I, uh, I couldn't know for sure how much was there if I'm uh, binding it up, eh? Right. Um, no, no, no. And all I was, all I was trying to, I, I'm sorry, I got confused. The wine glass is getting low. Apologies. I get it. I did the same thing when I had nitrites in the reed eye tank. I just never had heard of anyone adding ammonia to a tank with seahorses in it. I get the emergency. I'm just saying for anybody new, please don't try this. Please. He's experienced. He knows what he's doing. What he's doing. <laughs> He knows what he's doing. He knows how to calculate how much Chloramax to ammonia. If you are in an emergency situation, the best thing to do is add Chloramax or Prime to, to make sure they're not hurting at the moment and then contact someone with better experience to advise you and possibly do huge water changes is my advice. I get what you're saying, Ray. I'm not disagreeing. It's just some new people come to this channel and they're like, ah. Oh. Dump some stuff well, in and you know. I'd never have done it myself if I was new. Right. Exactly. Emergency situation. So just ma what, yeah, what you said makes sense. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. So we're coming on two hours, which I keep saying I'm going to limit this to an hour and we never do. So what else do we need to talk about? Besides that my mail still hasn't given me fry. <laughs> I'm not happy. didn't produce. Wait, what, Ray? I had seahorses that didn't produce. Yeah, I know, but I'm used to having well, look at I, the I'm human used race. to having tanks all around me. Like a, lot of people, a lot of humans that uh, don't reproduce, too. I don't have kids. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. And actually, I'll say they're probably... Listen, I, I'm kidding, guys. Before I say this, I'm kidding. But I think they hear our conversations because right. we're talking about, and I'm desperate to move. 
and I've got twin 15 year olds. They need their own rooms. They're currently sharing a room. And I'm like, I can't freaking take it anymore. I need them to have two rooms on the other side of the house. Right. So we're talking about moving. And I think the seahorses are saying, why well, start giving her fry before she moves? Right. That fingers crossed. They're going to wait. I'm going to move. And it's going to be like fry, fry, fry. Buy right. A duplex and put the girls in the other half. Oh, man, if I could afford it, Ray, I would do that for sure. <laughs> Holy crap. My one daughter, she's like, let me just move into my with my boyfriend. And I, oh, I know we're not seeing what's related to <laughs> now. But if anybody's a mother out there, it's like this delicate balance between I want to protect, of course, I love my daughter. I'd never, I'd never do that. I want her to at least have my guidance until she's 18 and goes to college. I want to help her. But then the other side of me is like, oh, please, please go live with your boyfriend who doesn't have a job, doesn't have a car, doesn't have anything, lives with his mother. Please go do it and come back crying, right? Oh, I, I sound terrible. I know. I know. Yeah, how does your mother feel never about ever that? wanted any kids. Wait, wait, Holly first, what? I said, how does his mother feel about that? <laughs> right, right. I mean, they love her, but still, it's like, you think, I mean, I'm cutting off your phone if you do that. I mean, you're... Uh, anyway, how do you Ray feel if say, he moves in with you? <laughs> it, that would never happen. <laughs> never. But well, Ray, what'd you my say? My youngest daughter doesn't want kids, never, ever has. Like, And she's in her mid-40s now. Same and, here. Uh, then I have my uh, second oldest one. She's 54 now, but uh, she always wanted kids. And she oh, yeah. had a couple, how do you say it? E eutectic uh, pregnancies? Ectopic? Oh, uh, Ectopic? Gosh, yeah. I, know. I know what you're talking about. I anyway, can't think the word. It's where uh, she gets pregnant and then it's not in the womb. Septic. Well, yeah. the first time it happened, they had to take out uh, the tubes and everything on that side. Then it happened on the other side. They had to take those out, so that means she can't have any at all. So what she did, uh, she was all her job is working with uh, adults that uh, have uh, not developed, like their mental age of uh, three, five years old. Some of them only at a, a stage of months rather than even mm -hmm. a year. That's her job. So what she did, she adopted kids. There were fetal oh. alcohol syndrome kids. Mm -hmm. oh, like that's um, great. today, she brought uh, her son. He's yeah. Uh, you told us he's yeah. nineteen to be twenty in July, but he's at a functioning age of two or three years old. Hmm. But this is what she did. Uh, she wanted kids so bad, and she didn't want to just adopt kids that so many people would adopt. She wanted to adopt the ones that are hard to adopt. Yeah, good for her. So much praise for your daughter. That's freaking amazing. Well, because I couldn't I couldn't do that. I mean, I, I couldn't, couldn't either. Special, no. Wonderful. I, I lived with a lady that did that and hard stuff she it, had. It to takes an awful lot out of you. And, it, uh, and like, I can't believe she did it. She gave me, when she was a kid, she gave us more trouble than <laughs> right, right. But uh, once she got in her mid twenties, she started straightening around, and uh, and then, uh, well, when she couldn't ha have any more, like uh, sh they talked it over, she and her husband, they talked it over, and uh, this is what they decided to do. They helped kids that had no other help. That's yeah. freaking amazing. My sister helps developmentally developmentally challenged uh, people, whatever they're problems well, she has um, or mentally or physically whatever she works with them mm -hmm. as a special teacher mm -hmm. but adopting them and, yeah. and well you know. the adoption was because she had three and when uh the one girl turned 18 they took she the girl to away from her oh why because she wasn't adopted and this is the the yeah. rule uh, of the, age. Uh, of the mm -hmm. thing yeah. now she had to go and live in uh, government homes, yeah, uh, group homes and that. So to make sure that uh, they couldn't take the other two away, that's when she adopted them. Still, she's been doing this the whole time, helping kids. That's so amazing. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, just to show you guys the other end of the stick, my son, who is now 24, 
I always wanted a girl. I won't go through the whole my life story, but my he, I loved him. He didn't have any resentment, but I always after him wanted to have a girl too. And then I ended up with twins and I was complaining to him because he's now an adult, my son, complaining to him about the girls. And he said, why in the world would someone that doesn't like kids have three kids? So there's the other end, you know, I mean, you've got women that care for all sorts of people that really need help. And then you got me. <laughs> I was like, why did I have kids? But no, that's, that's amazing, Ray, that your, your daughter's so special and so caring and just for me, I love the kids when they're small, but when they yeah. get to when they get to the point that uh, they would rather they be around their back. peers than uh, around grandpa and grandma, well, it's just not the same anymore. And then exactly, like, exactly. Uh, I would I would keep an in between forever. I love babies that you can hold and they they cry but they're so i know this has nothing to do with seahorses we're just rambling at the end of the show get over it but no i love babies as soon as they are able to run away talk back and oh my gosh turn teenager and uh mm, mm, mm. i should i should be a caregiver for infants somehow if that's a job or i should be like you know an adoptee of someone for a year <laughs> You'd be a foster. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not trying to mock because, it, or even you know, make light of it, uh, Ray, because that's really amazing what your daughter's done, and, well, and I'm so glad that, too. That's for sure. Yeah, so that's what makes her special, and mm -hmm. and 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 salute to anybody out there that does this kind of thing because that's I can't even stand my own kids. I said it, <laughs> but, so you know, but. Anyways, I'm th I'm thankful that you shared that, Ray. Because he puts the same effort into animal rescues, primarily dogs, but she travels all over Ontario. She bought a big uh, trailer to put behind her truck, so that she can take uh, stuff that she's got in donations from companies, uh, so she can take it up north, thousand uh, kilometers up north to uh, northern uh, northern reach. Uh, and then other organizations that do rescues and that. She just takes all these supplies along and gets things going, organizes all sorts of uh, uh, adoptions and that. Uh, like, she's just nuts. She never stops. She's just on the go all the time. And I, I'm, if I was the healthiest that I've ever been in my life, I couldn't do all the things, take care of these kids do all this research and then do her work with these uh, adults that aren't adults. Mm -hmm. like, you should be so proud. Mm -hmm. oh, you I should am. be so proud. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine. And I don't, I don't know anyone like that. I mean, I know a lot of people who how obviously Cheryl does a lot of stuff with, you know, animals. There's many people who just do stuff with kids, but to do both and just do it your whole life. That's amazing. Yeah. Anyhow, that's awesome. I don't know how you are all feeling, but I'm ready to uh, call it a quit. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to call it a quit. We didn't have any other questions. Don't forget, guys, when we have open chat, even when we're talking about amazing things like Ray's daughter, you can always ask a seahorse question. That's what we're here for, or saltwater. But for tonight, we are gonna have to call it. It's almost ten, so we love ya. And My other four kids are all normal, though. What? My other four kids are all normal. <laughs> not not as uh don't say that ray now they're going to be jealous don't say that. I meant to, <laughs> but, you know, I do things it. normally <laughs> i get it okay so any anybody who has any questions don't forget you can comment on the video or come next week and ask questions but for tonight let's all cheers